You may be wondering, what is the difference between the X-H2, the X-T5, and the X-H2S cameras from Fuji? In this video, I'm going to give you highlights of the X-H2S, X-H2, and the X-T5 cameras. Which camera is better suited to your needs? Speaking personally, I feel the X-H2S, which is this one with the S, is a better class of camera. And that is, I think, an unpopular opinion for those who think resolution is the name of the game. Or maybe this is just a position favored by hybrid shooters and not held by photographers. We're going to unpack all this in the video. What's your choice? Leave a comment below the video right now. Let me know. Maybe you already know. Type your choice in. Maybe you need to watch the video first and that's okay. Maybe, just maybe, I'll change your mind in this video. So the first section of this video is going to be my gut reaction. My pet peeves and joys to using all these cameras of using all these cameras for the first time. And then we're gonna go into the specs and some fundamental feature comparisons. I'm gonna end the video with my personal takeaways and reflection. <laughs> I'm gonna start with the X-T5, which is ultimately a camera I was curious about, but that I didn't buy. Here's my X-T5 impressions. I like the X-T5, but I don't love it. Before I get into the images, Two personal points about the ergonomics. On this camera and on this camera, uh, Fuji camera only ever, I accidentally switched into the advanced photo modes while shooting. And this happened more than once. I don't know what it is, but I bumped and I moved the left selector dial. Uh, it's not got a very strong uh, tension on it. Uh, and so I found out shooting in uh, uh, modes like toy camera, panorama. Point number two is the uh, ergonomics, and this uh, reminds me of the X-T4. Uh, and this is basically, you know, makes sense. It's the, the new version of the X-T4, which I own twice. And I never fully got to the place where I enjoyed picking up. You can see my hand goes below the grip here, uh, and this small grip, I actually need to add a grip onto it to, to hold on to uh, and make it feel comfortable. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the X-T4 here. I think it jumped in popularity and to Fuji's credit because of its hybrid power, its video specs put it on the map. Much like the GH5 put Panasonic or Panasonic or Lumix on the map with hybrid shooters and indie filmmakers, the X-T4 had a similar popularity and appeal. And uh, because I don't uh, enjoy shooting with the X-T4, ergonomically, I just didn't pick it up as much and therefore I don't have a lot of love to share for it. But I know there's diehard Fuji fans who swear by the X-T4, but not me. And the screen rotation is okay. You know, uh, it's like the G8, GFX. Uh, and I think Fuji's design assertion here is that it's for photographers. Uh, but you know, photographers also shoot in portrait orientation and this only gets kind of a, a semi, semi rotated up. So it's limited useful shooting in portrait mode. Uh, so this is an odd choice I feel like, but it definitely, definitely differentiates it in today's market. I like it, but I don't love it. Given this or the EOS R, I would take the EOS R, the Canon, because it feels right in my hand. Very comfortable, the Canon EOS R. So I use this camera with the uh, PZ 18 to 105, uh, sorry, the PZ 18 to 120 lens. I got some great shots while I was out doing a street photography workshop in Venice Beach. Let's take a look at those images. I think the image quality is standard Fuji. I, I don't really think the 40 megapixels really shines with this lens in particular. I think it this lens pr produces more ordinary images than most Fuji glass. But the lens is, this lens is best suited for an all-purpose type of application. Uh, so I don't have very many even portraits to show from that outing. And I usually get a bunch of portraits, but I'll put up a couple I got. The X-T5 is more like a throwback to the X-T3 in terms of being slightly smaller. So the X-T5 is smaller and lighter than the X-T4, which might be appealing to you. So that's worth noting. So again, the lack of a uh, full flip screen, while great, or at least serviceable for photographers, makes the camera actually a terrible choice for YouTube and vlogging. Uh, you can't see yourself while you're filming at all. All right, so moving on to the X-H2. So I bought this camera last summer. I took it on a camping trip uh, to Sequoia, and I thought it would be the perfect complement to the X-H2S, but I experienced some nagging autofocus issues. I never fell in love with the camera. Ultimately, I sent it back and I got my money back. I feel like the 40 megapixel sensor uh, does a capable job and autofocus issues aside, I enjoyed the camera, 
I just didn't feel like the 40 megapixel sensor on the X-T5 or this X-H2 really made a, a big difference. Ergonomics are solid. I like shooting with it. Moving on to the X-H2S impression. So if you've seen anything recently on my channel, you know I left Canon for Fuji, kind of like a breakup. See my recent video on dumping the Canon R5. And the camera that solidified the move was the X-H2S. Check the link in this video's description for a video on that. I think the standout feature is the stack sensor. It gives me all the autofocus and image processing speed I can ask for. As an event photographer, that's very important, including low light performance with autofocus. The dynamic range is there, the 6.2 open gate video specs, all there. However, it's the ergonomics that sold me. And I think I have to accept the unpopular position of liking the PASM dial uh, that the Fujis offer. I like the deep grip and I like the custom settings on the dial and I basically shoot in manual mode all the time. So program aperture and shutter priority modes, not that relevant to me, but that's where the camera comes. I just love, love, love the feel. I definitely appreciate the retro vibe, uh, these dials on the X-T5, um, but it's not my first choice or criteria when choosing a camera. Uh, like I don't basically choose the X-H2S for the program, aperture, and shutter modes. Um, it's not my first criteria. Ergonomics rule the day. And you can see the difference in the depth of uh, the grips there. You can see the difference in the depth of the grips. So uh, ergonomics is the most important thing. And then speed as an event photographer and documentary filmmaker. Ergonomics and speed have got to be there. So when I first used the X-H2S, one of the first events was a community event with kids riding bikes through an obstacle course that the police were facilitating for a bike safety training. I switched into motorcycle tracking, nailed every shot. I switched into am animal subject detect and nailed shots of pets at the event. Of course, human eye autofocus was on point. I was sold. I've used vehicle tracking and lo love it. This makes the life of an event photographer and documentary filmmaker a dream. So personal experience aside, here are some quick main points to consider. The sensor. So let's look at the sensor in all these. X-H2S was the first Fuji to debut the latest X-Processor 5 engine and an APS sensor. And these are also found on the X-H2 and the X-T5. However, the number of megapixels fit into these is 40 megapixels. This leaves the X-H2S with bigger pixels. So fewer in the same size sensor which leads to better low light performance on the X-H2S. Bigger pixels have an advantage in low light. Let's talk about autofocus. Okay, so first of all, all three of these have the impressive autofocus system phase detect. Uh, they have an advanced phase detection autofocus system, but I feel like the X-H2S stands out with its stack sensor. It really enables that camera to keep up and quickly and accurately track subjects in challenging conditions. So even with the firmware updates recently, this camera has better tracking capabilities, maximizing the stickiness on subjects as well as helping in crowded or distracting backgrounds. The X-T5 and the X-H2 also have reliable autofocus, but they may not be as quick to react to changes in the scene. Let's talk about speed. Burst mode and buffering. So the X-T5 and the X-H2 models could shoot bursts up to 15 frames per second with mechanical shutter, but the X-T5 actually slows down after 19 uncompressed raw frames while the X-T, X-H2 can endure 400 frames without slowing. With JPEGs, the X-T5 can handle 119 frames before slowing, while the X-H2 jumps up to 1,000 frames without slowing. However, X-H2S gives you 40 frames per second in the electronic shutter mode, while matching the others in the mechanical shutter at 15 frames per second. And don't forget the secret weapon that's found here it's the 1 180th of a second in the X-H2 and X-T5, but not in the X-H2S, which tops out at 1 thousandth of a second for shutter speed. So what's the use case for speeds like this? Since conventional DSLRs of 10 years ago gave you tax sh uh, sharp images of sports and racing, Benefit, you can shoot wide open in sunlight at apertures of f1.2 or f1.4 and get crazy background bokeh and natural light. You don't have to stop down to f8 or cut uh, or lower to cut that light, and that changes the background blur behind your subject, providing more detail in the background. 
So while the X-H2 and X-T5 have the top electronic shutter speed, due to the slowish sensor readout, this the application of the shutter speed is limited because you get awful rolling shutter if the camera's in motion while shooting at these speeds. Not personally tested this out, but it bears keeping in mind the basic physics and camera mechanics. Let's talk about dynamic range. The X-H2S and the X-T5 both have excellent dynamic range, which means they can capture a wide range of tones from light to dark. The X-H2 has good dynamic range. According to a test of the X-H2 at Digital Camera World, the reviewers bragged about the X-H2's dynamic range. But the graph actually shows the statistics they've charted out. The X-H2S outperforms the X-H2. Let's talk about image quality. Moving on to image quality, all three cameras produce sharp, detailed images, but the X-H2 and the X-T5 with more megapixels on the same APS-C size sensor have smaller pixels, which means the X-H2S performs better in low light. I know I mentioned this before, but it's worth mentioning it again because a lot of people have questions about low light performance. I have a video where I compare the X-H2 and the X-H2S shot for shot. I even provide the raw files for viewers like you to examine. I couldn't personally tell the difference. Uh, however, some viewers said they could, and some said you'd only see the difference if you printed the images at size greater than 24 inches by 36 inches, which would be a, not a very common practice for me, honestly. So theoretical improvements aside from the increase in megapixels, uh, however, the X-H2S still produces great images and is a fantastic camera for photographers. I trust it completely, and I got rid of the Canon R5 in favor of the X-H2S. And I, that should speak volumes for the image quality. So, IBIS, Internal Body Image Stabilization, or In-Body Image Stabilization. Stabilization, of course, is another important feature to consider, especially for videographers or photographers who shoot in low light or without a tripod. The X-H2S and X-H2 have five stops of IBIS. X-T5 uh, boasts seven stops of IBIS. Combining these stabilized bodies with stabilized lenses can provide you with all you need in terms of smooth shooting. Smooth shooting. Customizability, so first, uh, or finally, let's talk about the customizability. I favor the X-H2S, and I'm mainly talking about here, this dial where you can set up seven custom profiles or settings, seven custom film recipes, and with the video record button, you get that film recipe look baked in, which gives me custom looks. I'm actually shooting Pacific Blues uh, film recipe for this video. The X-T5, the dials are all for exposure settings, uh, so there is no custom uh, uh, film recipe settings to flip to. You have to go into the Q menu uh, or into the menu. Overall, each of these cameras have its strengths and weaknesses, but they're all excellent options for photographers and videographers. If you're looking for the best autofocus performance, X-H2S, I believe, may be the best choice for you. If you want the best image quality and stabilization, X-T5 might be the way to go. If you're looking for a more affordable option that still produces great images, the X-H2 is a, a great choice. So what's your choice? Leave me a comment and let me know. So in conclusion, whether you're a professional photographer or just starting out, these cameras, they offer a range of features that can really help you capture stunning images and videos. So take some time to consider your needs and your preferences and choose the camera that best fits your style and budget. You may fall on the side that Fuji's triumphant 40 megapixel sensor is the breakthrough you should be looking for. The game changer, at least for me, is the X-H2S with its stack sensor. Thank you for watching. Hope this video was helpful in your decision-making process. And leave a comment, leave a like, and subscribe if you're not subscribed. See you in the next video.